When we got to the camp, we had no idea we would stay there for four and a half years. Some of the other people stayed there for 13 years. And now, when I close my eyes, I still fear the smell of mustard gas. And it smells like sweet apples. I'm an Iraqi refugee, and I lived in Rafha refugee camp in Saudi Arabia from 7 to 12 years old. My way of escaping reality was to imagine the world around me as a comic strip. Many refugees don't talk about our past, but I'm in search of the words for what people don't talk about. I collected these photos from relatives and archives. They are the canvas upon which I tell my story and the stories of those like me. Still, very little is known about us, the thousands of refugees who fled Iraq in the 90s. In 1990, Iraq invaded and annexed Kuwait over a dispute involving oil. 35 nations led by the U.S. military waged war against Iraq and called for the Iraqi people to rise up against the dictator Saddam Hussein. But at the end of the Gulf War, Saddam crushed the rebellion, and those who rose up against him were forced to flee their homes or face the consequences. In 1991, 28,000 people walked across the Saudi border from Iraq into miles of nothing but sand. Soon after, thousands more joined them in the camp, bringing the total up to nearly 40,000. I was seven and a half years old and traveling with my mother and four younger siblings. We were fleeing a war and searching for refuge. Somehow, I thought I was in this amazing place. My parents let me play soccer all day and I got to watch a lot of movies and cartoons. We watched the Battle of Algiers and Lion of the Desert over and over again and the reruns of Japanese cartoons like Captain Majid and Grandizer dubbed in Arabic. I hated the religious schools. Every time there was a regime change, we had to learn a new salute. After a while, you forget them. At least soccer never changed. This large group of displaced Iraqis found itself in an empty space with no tents or infrastructure. We had to start making bricks to build makeshift homes. I started when I was eight. My father tried keeping hope he struggles with PTSD, which was caused by torture under the Iraqi government. The camp was a numbers game. We were all referred to by a five to seven digit number assigned to us called Araqm al bataqa Everyone from guards to doctors would call us by this number. It's like we no longer had names. But if your number was chosen, it could be your lottery ticket out of the camp. My father, along with his friend, would spend the day talking politics and daydreaming about the day they would leave the camps. We didn't want war. We wanted to go home to be with our families. I had never been outside my home, and this was never going to be home. I'm just one of millions of refugees around the world. Each of our stories is nuanced, but our shared experience of displacement, physically and emotionally, is one that should not be shelved away in a corner or behind a wall. There are too many of us to ignore and we remember every moment. And I will never forget what it felt like to live in constant fear of smelling sweet apples. <laughs>